I'm Drew Stevenson. This is for my professional responsibility class. Here I'm going to be talking about a landmark U.S. Supreme Court decision from 1964 called Garrison versus Louisiana. If you didn't study this in your professional responsibility class, you may have covered it in a course about the First Amendment. Um, you won't be asked about this case by name on the MPRE or on my exam if you're one of my students, uh, but this case really shaped the area of law that has become codified in ABA Model Rule 8.2. So it might be really useful background to help you remember um, the elements of the rule and how it applies to different hypothetical situations that you may encounter on the exam. So let's dive in and talk about Garrison versus Louisiana. A New Orleans prosecutor named Jim Garrison, who actually is famous for other reasons that you can look up later on your own, he held a press conference. And in this press conference, he blamed the large backlog of pending uh, criminal cases in New Orleans on the inefficiency and laziness and excessive vacations of the local judges. Um, he also criticized their refusal to reimburse the district attorney's office for undercover operations. In other words, he got elected partly on a platform of cracking down on crime in New Orleans, and he claimed that all his efforts were being thwarted uh, by the judges. Well, the judges didn't like that, so they retaliated by having Garrison charged with criminal defamation for his public uh, accusations. Uh, he was convicted and appealed. He took it to the U.S. Supreme Court, and he claimed that the, the charges and the conviction uh, violated his First Amendment rights to free speech, and he ended up winning at the U.S. Supreme Court. So the court held that the First Amendment protects a lawyer from civil or criminal liability for derogatory statements about judges unless the lawyer speaks with actual malice. And then it defines actual malice as knowledge of the statement's falsity or in reckless disregard of whether it was false. So pay attention to that. And that's part of 8.2 as well. The mens rea or uh, uh, the mental state of the lawyer in making the statement really matters or whether they could be in violation of the rule. Or to put it another way, if a lawyer has a good faith belief and some evidence to support or good reasons for believing so, what they said about a judge, then the, they would not be liable um, to discipline or subject to discipline under the rule because they didn't act with actual malice. So it's this only applies if the lawyer knows that what they're saying is not true, but that could apply where the lawyer is getting carried away and hurling insults at someone that he really just means as uh, insults um, or uh, exaggerates some things about the judge. So if it's strictly true or the lawyer has good reasons to believe the statement is true, it won't apply but if the lawyer crosses the line and says some things that are not true, the lawyer could be subject to discipline. Now, um, as I mentioned, this rule uh, has uh, continued, and Garrison versus Louisiana is still good law and continues to be cited a lot. Um, the uh, The way courts phrase the rule from Garrison, though, has evolved a little bit over the years. So here's an example from the Supreme Court of Colorado in the year 2000 where they expressed it as disciplinary authority um, in a state has to prove that the criticism was a false statement of fact or that the st it was a statement of opinion that necessarily implied some undisclosed assertion of facts. In other words, the lawyer says, well, I believe this judge is corrupt and I have good reasons uh, for thinking that. Well, that implies that the lawyer has actual evidence. So that would be if the lawyer doesn't have good reasons besides hunches and rumors and gossip and so forth, then there's no basis and um, and a discipline is appropriate. So the lawyer has to act with actual malice, with knowledge or reckless disregard of the falsity of the statement. As I mentioned, Model Rule 8.2a reflects this standard for professional responsibility purposes. So does the restatement of the law governing lawyers in Section 114, which says uh, discipline is appropriate only for false statements made knowingly or recklessly. And that concludes my short uh, video about Garrison versus Louisiana.